forever? Yeah. I think I want to wear outfits. <laughs> <laughs> Just every outfit? Yeah, yeah, you get the opportunity to wear every single outfit. So wait, are there any styles that you've been too afraid to try that you would ne that you would then feel brave enough to try if you were immortal? It's not necessarily styles. It's um, like time periods I would have wanted to be a part of. Oh. But I will, I will make the caveat. Of course, I only want to do this if I'm rich and if I'm rich the whole time. Well, I think the idea with these movies is they always like accumulate wealth because they're alive for so exactly, long. Exactly, exactly. Like the Cullens are loaded. But still need you to go see to school for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Why are we still in school? You know, there's, <laughs> he's like, there's nothing else for me to learn. But when you have to blend in, I'm like, you could just not go and no one would question you. Move to bigger towns. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Live Wait, in just, Seattle. Just conquer high school again in a new town, yeah. <laughs> right, but they don't, have to, they don't have to go to school. They could just be the same age as they are. Just live oh. in Seattle. Also, now with... Carlisle's a doctor, right? Mm -hmm. Blame it on Botox. And you get an extra 10 years. He's an amazing plastic surgeon. Leave it at that. You'd be like, we just have a really good plastic surgeon, and it's Carlisle. I mean, Paul Rudd looks like that. Paul, so Rudd, Paul Rudd does. does look like yeah. that. He's aged phenomenally. You could, so you could definitely justify, especially, yeah, in like New York, LA kind of thing. I mean, Peter Thiel believes that he'll never die. Wait, who's Peter Thiel? Yes. The uh, co-founder of PayPal with Elon Musk. Oh, He's okay, like okay. He's this Silicon Valley asshole who, um, his claim to fame is that he got Hulk Hogan to bankrupt Gawker because Gawker outed him as gay. Wait, Hulk Hogan? Yeah. Is gay? No, no, not Hulk Hogan. Peter Thiel is gay. Oh. But for some reason. <laughs> the way he said that, I was like, you're the way you're like, duh. <laughs> Obviously, Hulk Hogan, gay icon, which wouldn't surprise me. That family has had a lot of shit happen. And it basically like started when they had the reality show. The Hogans? Like at home with the Hogans or whatever. I don't remember oh. that. Do you, what do you remember about it? I never even knew about this the show. The daughter Tell had a singing it. career. What? It was back when, like, they did the Osbournes and, like, all of that. Like, they all came... Remember when the, the Osborne family had a yes, reality yeah, show? Yeah, yeah, the yes, yeah, yeah, the Osbournes. Yeah, yeah, And I think they were trying to play off of that success. I'll okay. be honest, I only know about the Osbournes because they were featured in an Austin Powers movie. Mm. That's the only reason I'm aware of them. I never, I, I never knew that they had a show otherwise. And the SNL sketch. I, like, thought Sharon Osbourne was, like, made up for SNL for a little bit. Do you know what I'm really? talking about? Really? <laughs> Yeah. When they when they would do the Sean Connery Jeopardy, yeah, and she'd be like, "Mimi wrote it," and she like had this little <laughs> dog, and she would write it. And to this day, we still quote that in my family. Like, "Mimi oh my wrote God. it" is a <laughs> lexicon. You thought Sharon Osbourne was made up like a for fake SNL? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, SNL was my Bible. Was like all uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. What? And so that era? Or did you also watch like the Gilly era? Like. I, no, I, yes, yes. And I remember being like, that's dumb. She's just misbehaving. <laughs> right. <laughs> She's just a bad person. Like, yeah. when people just don't follow rules, it stresses me out immensely. <laughs> oh. And that's definitely, like, the Catholic in me, but oh. I'm like, oh, it's your yeah, guilt. Yeah. It's, your it's guilt. my guilt. You I clocked guilt. you as Jewish, but I see Catholic for I you. I get that a lot now that I've moved here. Um, also, people think I'm an old Jewish man because my name is Sid King. Mm. Like, yeah. I have shown up to bookings, and the booker is like, I thought you were an old Jewish man. Surprise. You get to hear about my purity ring. Have fun. <laughs> you had a purity wait, ring wait, like so the Joe. How would the booker wait? The booker booked you, but didn't ever see you. Yeah, they you, didn't ask for a tape. Like what? That's on them. I don't know. <laughs> what? I think it was like the person. Maybe it wasn't. It was like more the host. Like someone booked me, and then the host thought I was an old man. I, I oh, don't really okay, know. okay. So someone booked you, but it was different than another person. Uh, critical yeah. So to when the I show. got to the venue, someone was surprised. I see. I yes. see. I, okay. 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 Yeah. It would be funny if you were an old man with a purity ring. Like yeah. still, still, but with your voice as well. <laughs> <laughs> So I famously did not have a purity ring. Um, I begged my parents for one, and they said, like, we're not going to pay money to tell people you're a virgin. That's so weird. And Can I just say, you're super cool. Genius <laughs> parenting. Genius pick. Yeah, and you're also That's, the coolest. That is hilarious. But it was it was it because you just wanted, like, a decked out ring, or was it because the Jonas Brothers had a purity ring? So the Jonas Brothers were doing amazing things for purity culture. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And people Big representation. Also, people also forget a lot of the girls had them, too. Like, Britney had one. Demi had one. Um, female really? erasure female erasure yeah you know me jordan sparks had one did she yes. that one i didn't know about jordan sparks also 
talked about um wait so kevin jonas is the only one that we know of and we're pretty sure and like they've come out and said this that actually waited until marriage Mm -hmm. and when he had sex with his wife danielle apparently he was just went oh that's it i don't know if that was worth waiting for and yeah but okay can we just have like a moment of silence for well, Kevin's wife. Poor Dan- Danielle. Poor Danielle. <laughs> poor Danielle. <laughs> oh, holy Imagine get okay, can I can I ask do you do you know if she also had a purity ring? Like did she wait for marriage as I well? I think so, and I think that's kind of the reason that they knew each other cuz she was okay. a dare I say normie. Okay. Yeah, she was. She's not a celeb. She's just from New Jersey. Yeah. Ugh, iconic. Did you guys watch the roast of the Jonas Brothers? I no, did. I didn't, but I heard it was actually really good. It was really good, but she had lost her voice. So who came up and did it for her? I think it was like Pete Davidson or something. It was bizarre. <laughs> and then she Wait, was that's kind of cool. Like, that would be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah you remember really when little... we had sex and you... <laughs> wait that was seth rogan i'm sorry i got mixed up no but it was kind of p davidson yeah okay get, Thank get you. into his frame of mind you, uh, okay, your okay. dad's dead in 9 11 yeah uh, <laughs> halfway there <laughs> okay <laughs> okay and you're a new yorker so you're there 9-11, yeah, yeah 9 11 i have sex with kim kardashian mm, yes 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 okay um yeah kevin uh you need to fuck better man <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> pretty good pretty, pretty good, good. Wait, so you, you you all formally believe that Pete Davidson and Kim Kardashian have had sex? I mean, Ooh. I would never put it. I would never put it upon them. And I know that uh, assuming makes an ass of you and me. Mm-hmm. So, I, are you a doubter? I've never heard this conspiracy theory that they've never had sex. Yeah, um, it's not. I just don't. I don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> I so sometimes I get to work on SNL like I do background yes. yeah. on the show. So I've seen the, I've seen the photos. Yeah, see, yeah. So I did the Kim Kardashian episode and I was in her presence. And really, the only thing I can say about her is she smells like self tanner and is much smaller than you think she is. Whoa. She is literally pocket sized. So she had. For, for, forgive me for interrupting, but I heard the exact same thing about Ariana Grande is mm-hmm. that she's even tinier than you expect. E- even tinier. So we just need yeah. a lineup of those two, and then Daniel Radcliffe in the middle. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> As the He's yardstick. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Measuring up. Um, and I don't really have it. She was really nice, but we weren't. We were literally not allowed to make eye contact with her. Whoa. And like I do SNL enough where like they pretty much always use the same background, so mm. um, they like know that you won't freak out on set. Yes. And like that's part of the reason you get picked more. Like um, and but this I've never heard them say anything about that. They're like. If you think you have something to say, you don't. If they talk to you, you don't really, like, you don't really have anything to say. And this wasn't, like, coming from her. I think it was just, like, it was very, very heightened. But she turned around and waved at me and my friend. We, like, looked away and we're like, oh, no, now she probably thinks we hate her. And everyone's Aww. like, no, I don't think Kim Kardashian's thinking about it. Aww. Um, yeah, pro- she's uh, having yeah. anxiety she's nice. dreams about you. And then, like, Pete is always just texting. He's just constantly on okay. his phone texting people. And I'm like, maybe they're boring. I don't know. I just... I'm not saying it's a PR relationship. I think they're very friendly. And it's... I just like the idea of them having sex with each other. Mm. Mm. Maybe they only do hand stuff. See, uh, oh, like a, like, a, like a good like a good high schooler. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah. Like the, Maybe no, they I'm not dry saying, hump just over the jeans. Yes, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying they're um, an OTPHJ. Uh, HJ? Over, over the pants hand job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Another staple of Catholicism. Um, and we also had uh, a no blanket rule, no blankets allowed. So if you were like over at like a somebody else's house, no blankets on laps. What? Oh, so that you can't like give a little reach mm-hmm. under yeah. the, the blanket. Yeah. A little. Yeah. But it would still be an OTPH jet. I had so many thoughts about that. Before, okay, before we get into it, we need to say welcome to Two Nosy Meerkats. <laughs> the best podcast in the world because of our very, very special guest. Our special guest is the amazing Sid King! Sid King! Old man! Old Jewish man of comedy. Jewish man with a purity ring. Yes. How are you? I'm doing incredibly well. Yeah, I love this outfit. Thank you. Yeah, It is great, yeah. I wore my funkiest sweater. Um, It's got color blocked, so this is a little Snoopy, and on the back there's a huge Snoopy. God saves his funkiest sweaters for his most <laughs> Jewish old man of chicks. <laughs> for his most joyous occasions. And it's also yes. it's also double breasted. Which when's the last time you saw a double breasted cardigan? Oh. I don't think I've ever seen I've one. never seen anything double breasted. Did you know it was called double breasted? I didn't. I, I did know like that. Like a peacoats are yeah. normally double breasted. Yeah. Which mm. for listeners, it just means it has two sets of buttons. Mm. It has two sets of boobs. Like I do. <gasps> 
It's four boobs. Where do you like keep? Where do you keep the other two? Um, in a, dra- in a drawer. In a drawer. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah. It's imagine- nice to have a spare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now imagining them all as nipples, like I'm a cow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, that would just be an udder. Well, yeah, that would be sense. <laughs> they're nipples. They're nipples. They're nipples. They're nipples. Yeah. They're Wait, nipples. Do, do, you, do you remember, um, like, uh, back at the barnyard? Or the I was bar- just about to say, remember how all the men had udders, so they're yeah, all trans. All the icons. male cows had udders. It was the weirdest thing. They what do you all, mean, all, back all cows. At, all cows. All, all cows. All cows had udders. All cows had so udders. It's, it's like post-apocalyptic. Like, have you heard the theory that um, cars is just post-apocalyptic and like basically oh, I have heard have. That. cars become sentient? I'm like, yes. this is post-apocalyptic. It's all female cows, or like all. Like female, uh, oh yes, right, yes, like yes, cows, yes. and um, I mean I'm making this up as I'm saying. No, it, no, 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 keep I've, going. It's, no, you're not, you're not out of bounds. But I you think, can keep going. and then like they, they all really talk. I, I do think it's a matter of time before animals just start chit chatting away. Well, have you seen the videos of um, uh, people teaching their dogs to talk by creating buttons with various Bunny? words? Yes, yes, yes. Bunny scares me a lot. It's terrifying. It's amazing, but right. it's so scary. So because these dogs are just pressing a button like want walk now pet play like please. Stephen yeah. Hawking <laughs> I guess not exactly like that I, I'm, I'm gonna argue very different from Stephen Hawking. <laughs> it's not very Stephen yes and of me Hawking. but <laughs> you're gonna tell me cows don't know theories you don't know <laughs> what a bad I'm, time to take a I sip I have no words I um I, I just like Stephen Hawking <laughs> It's just like Stephen Hawking. Um, R. Oh R. my R. God. I will say, uh, well, now I'm forgetting because I'm thinking about Stephen Hawking. <laughs> Happens to cow. the best of us. Yeah. Have uh, you think you're thinking of Stephen Hawking being a cow? Is that what you just said? Or do you mean him just like pressing buttons? Like I'm you- thinking of him pressing buttons and then I'm thinking of the cows pressing buttons. Oh, I remember I was going to say, mm-hmm. you know about Coco the Gorilla, right? Oh, I know about this. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, talk about she it. She was it. this gorilla mm-hmm. who learned sign language. And her oh, whole sure, thing sure. Was she Is this was... in the 90s? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. yes. Her whole thing was she was like so pure and always signing like humans mess up the earth and shit. Mm. And Robin Williams would come visit her and she would like hug him and it was supposed to be this rubber stamp that he was a good soul. Could you imagine? You... So that is actually the plot of the new Harry Potter movie. What? Have you guys seen the most recent Harry Potter? I have seen. I've seen it. Yeah. No. The Secrets of Grindelwald. There's oh, yeah. that animal that like says you're a good soul or not, which yeah, they it's made like up a, for the movie. And that's it's like fucked a, up. Wait, what is the name of that? It's like Chin something? A Chin I could or... not tell you. It, yeah, that sounds... It, it sounds like it could be racist, but isn't quite. It does. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, not it gonna, sounds... I'm not going to ideate till I get there, just in case. Okay, yeah, but there's like, there's <laughs> a sort of like, it's a, it's a very cute sort of magical creature that sort of looks like a deer, kind of yes, a little bit. It's, it looks and like it's, a dick dick. Yeah, it does. It does look like a dick dick. Yeah. Um, it's like, a, it's like an African, very tiny deer. What the fuck is a dick dick? It's D-I-K-D-I-K. D-I-K. Exactly. Oh. Yes. So, it, but basically it, it's like, um, it's supposed to be like one of the most pure magical creatures in the wizarding world and if you put it in front of people who are candidates to be like the there's like there's like an international confederation of wizards and witches and they can pick who's going to be the best one just by how pure of heart they are and so the animal it's a big plot point that um they need to protect it so that they can make sure that grindelwald doesn't get elected it's a little fucked up you can't tell who's pure of heart or not well, well, that's the animal's the, whole purpose. Yeah, that's that's its, its a, whole thing. It's a magical creature. But that's I, its I, entire personality. I mean, you Gabby. can't right. control who's if you're pure of heart. Also, I just don't believe. Well, I think they like even said soul, not heart. I could be wrong, but I'm like, no one is. You can't be alive that long and not have messed up once. Oh, for sure. No, yeah, circling yeah. back Uncle Thalsus, and believe me, I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> he he made a few mistakes. Yeah, that Mary Magdalene. <laughs> No Talk comment. about it. <laughs> Keep going. She she deserved better. There, I'll say it. He was he was a he was a fuck boy. He was a two timing hussy. <laughs> he was a two time. Last night in the cab back from a, a roast battle, I was I. We you roasted was... each other last night. No 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 no. Uh, oh. Gabby uh, roasted the hell. Out, uh, talk about it. I roasted, about I roasted roast, fluke human. It was yeah, a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and then we were coming back from the venue, and we were talking about what if there was like one of those performative male feminists. You know, those people who are like, God is a woman, but like mm-hmm. they're dudes trying mm-hmm. to get laid. What if there was someone who was like, Jesus, she is great. <laughs> like didn't know how it all worked. And yeah. Was like performatively <laughs> calling Jesus a girl. 
Jesus, oh, she, he, I mean, she <laughs> is the moment. <laughs> Jesus. incredible yeah. yeah so jesus is really just i mean because jesus was a carpenter as we all know mm. as we all know as we all know so allegedly jesus, jesus was just a like lesbian into carpentry yeah. oh yeah <laughs> building building her home yeah. he was a u-haul lesbian before her before their time oh no didn't you haul fast enough that mary magdalene was waiting with bated mm-hmm. breath i always want to know what happened to her because she's still around she dropped an r&b album oh <laughs> It's so good. New career. No, she's she started Jesus Christ Superstar. Oh. Oh, that's great. That's what she did. Andrew Lloyd Webber made her a star. Overnight no. sensation. I'm Beautiful. glad she didn't start Godspell, the way inferior uh, mm. Catholic play. Or Jesus you, play. So you think? <laughs> Wait, what do you think? I'm a Godspell girly. Really? Oh, okay. Were you ever in one? I was indeed in Godspell. I played Donald Trump in Godspell in one of the parables. So uh, we did the revival version because they revived it on Broadway with like Hunter Parrish and Donald Trump a few other celebrities and there was like a thing yeah it was the um the the fatted calf and I had to go you're fired and I just like did this weird New Jersey <laughs> accent and I was bad at it <laughs> wait, wait, wait 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 do you remember any lines beyond you fired wait what, what would you know because it was so the way they do the parables is somebody narrates it and then you just like interject a little bit of a line and you're like acting it out behind them okay. so the whole show was just like little vignettes I see and then songs. I've never seen Godspell to okay. be fair um, it's it's a fun time. I like okay. that there's a lot of different interpretations you can do, and it's really about the parables. So it's like, I don't know. It plays up like the fun aspects of it. I got to wear this like really fun skirt, and that was important to me. As nice. I've mentioned, if I live forever, I just want to wear outfits. Yeah. <laughs> um, outfits exclusively. Um, Jesus Christ Superstar, I've just seen it done poorly too many times, and it's mm. like disappointing. But the 70s version is great. Interesting, because I have the opposite experience where I've seen Godspell done poorly, mm-hmm. and I've seen Jesus Christ Superstar done really well. I saw Godspell for the first time at my summer camp, and the girl who played Jesus was flat so the Jesus entire is a time. Woman, Jesus is a Jesus. Jesus is a woman. <laughs> Jesus, yeah, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, what it was was there weren't enough like good male actor singers. It's at a the lot camp. of singing, yeah. Um, and so the one guy who could kind of possibly play between Jesus and Judas, the director chose to have him play Judas. Mm-hmm. That's a har- it's a harder part to play. Like it's emotionally harder. Jesus, you have to just kind of like get up there and be like, Oh God, I'm dying. And then you just die. <laughs> I'm sorry. Which is there also how he did it yeah. in real yeah. life. But she was flat. She was flat the entire time. I mean, God bless her soul, but she was. Oh, I mean, bless she's the Lord, her soul. Yeah. If you will. <laughs> The actress, I don't know. Bless where her she little is. heart. Yeah, she so, she was like new to the camp, and she got I all the she was parts. a nudist. I thought you were. I thought you were saying she was nude. As I was like, oh, damn, okay. She was nude. That's a choice. She was, you know, she was. Yeah, I, when she when I said she was flat, I wasn't talking about the notes. Oh yeah, yeah. no tits. No, no, no tits, tits on this tits. bitch. And then the girl who played, who's the girl who's like, turn back, old man. Oh, man, not old man, but that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, okay. a, that's a great rewrite. Turn back, oh, man. <laughs> turn back, old man. Um, so none of them have names. You're either Jesus, Jesus, or, sorry, Judas, Jesus, or you're like in the ensemble. Yeah. Okay. There's, But the girl who sings that song was um, talented, but woefully miscast because uh-huh. they cast her as like, at camp, you can make this mistake where you can cast too young, I think. Yeah. Mm. And they, she was Oh, like, this is when you were at summer camp. Yeah. I see. Okay, okay. She was like 14 and they had her in this sexy role and that should have been played by someone like 16. Because yeah. 16, mm. it's like, I'm talking like a pedophile or something, but it's just like- when, 16's way hotter. <laughs> when you're at camp, you're like, 16 makes more sense than 14 Absolutely. for that role. I, I see what you mean. I you see know? what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, totally. I never understood why that song is so sexy. Yeah, you know, what are the And just, it comes out of literally nowhere. <laughs> like it's just like oh and that's the story of the prodigal son. Lights dim, turn back. <laughs> and there's like somebody with a oh, boa man. just comes down the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the thing when we were talking about Hulk Hogan earlier is that I thought when you were saying that he was secretly gay, I was like, he loves a feather boa. That's he uh, does love a, like a, a red and yellow feather boa. Wrestling is camp. So camp. Wrestling is so camp. I think baseball is camp. Do you guys know about, um, oh, okay. Well, I was going to say, do you guys know about, um, oh my gosh. Oh, what is his name? Rick. 
Rick something and he had Rick Flair? Rick Rick Rubin? Rick what? Rick Flair? Rick Flair? Rick yeah. Flair. And he had yeah. those those pink pants. Yes. Was yes. Like, I'm Rick Very Flair. Pink. Yeah. Incredible. And then they still get to beat people up. And I was like, that's yeah, that's a beautiful murder thing. gymnastics theater. That's what wrestling is. Murder, gymnastics, murder theater. gymnastics theater. Well, there's like they do these things in LA called lucha vavoom, which is like luchadors. Um, but yeah. they, it's like maybe also burlesque. I could be making this up to entirely. But my sister's a huge fan. My sister and her friends are like huge fans. I've never heard of this. This Look sounds up really fun. Boom. Lucha, yeah. lucha yeah. I think I've heard it. Burlesque is crazy. Burlesque mm. is like. I feel like I've seen it described on Twitter as like stripping for nerds. I've heard it. It's like, yeah, it's like um, all the fun parts out of stripping gone. <laughs> stripping with backstory. Yeah. Stripping with backstory. <laughs> it's like somehow like unsexy, like, I, but with the attempt, it's, it's like sexy for overachiever girls, you know? For it's, type it's, A's. It's AP yeah. stripping. Yes! AP stripping. Yes! Oh my god! You and, nailed it. That and was I it. have friends who are burlesque dancers. It sounds like I'm saying like I have black friends or something. I have <laughs> friends. Listen, many of my best friends are burlesque dancers. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm very I tolerant. My, I am yeah. myself a burlesque dancer, but I still think it's terrible. Is where you're going with this? Yes. Do we need to circle back on baseball being camp? baseball yes. is camp? Okay, baseball is camp because the t it is almost like so slow that like any little thing that happens is like the tension has built to a point where like it's so dramatic when it does happen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also like the human interest stories behind all of it are very like there was one guy years ago who was like a janitor and then he started playing for a major league team but like the come up of that story and then he gets in these situations that are like you know, bottom of the ninth, two outs, time to hit bottom the game of the winning hit. Oh. Yes. Yeah, he's bottoming. Yeah. <laughs> you know how it goes. Oh. But I think baseball is camp. I think not enough people see baseball that way because it's so slow and people don't want to watch slow stuff, mm. which I guess is fair. True. Yeah. True. Also, it's very much about community. Like uh, watching baseball, not fun. Being at a baseball game, very, very fun. Oh. Mm. I would say more so than exact like, basketball opposite for or football. something. Exact yes. opposite. Going to a football game, so boring. But when you're watching at home, you have the commentary. Mm -hmm. Like At least at the Super Bowl, you have like fun commercials. There's so much more that goes into watching it at home rather than being at a game. I went to one football game at college, and I hated it. It was four hours, and I, it was time I'll never get back. I went to what the kids sometimes call a football school. Um, like I went to a Big Ten school. I did So too. there's like basketball schools and, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 in the Midwest. Yes. yes. Um, and... It, we would oh. ever heard of it, Gabby? <laughs> ever heard of the Midwest? <gasps> ever heard of the ever Big been? Ten? Uh... Ever heard of the largest ten you've ever seen? <laughs> that also has it has thirteen in the conference anyway. Yeah. Wait, it's called Big Ten, but there's it's thirteen. More than ten. Well, that's football school for you. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, yeah. a football that's the school concussion. for you. Yeah, not yeah. good at math don't, anymore. Don't, don't, don't be done, but there's thirteen oh of God. them. Um, but we would call it game time, nap time. So you would get very very drunk at the tailgate then you'd go home and sleep and then you'd show up for like maybe the last maybe the last quarter but see that's very not. smart that's yeah. so smart that's really it's smart. about the tailgate it's about the hang it's oh about yeah, yeah, the yeah, hang. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i've never tailgated oh tailgating is fun tailgating, tailgating is, fun. is fun it is overwhelming though it's and, like a and, parking lot barbecue and it's... also dirty like i just it, it, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's very sloppy <laughs> how so tell say more so we had specific tailgating fields where i went okay. there was a dedicated space to tailgating and it was like That's so considerate so considerate and it was like no matter what the temperature was it was like it had just freshly rained and everyone was just muddy oh that sucks but it was it was fun but i was in a i was in greek life and the pressure of tailgating was often too much for me oh so you were frat bro yeah i was i was in the coolest of the lame sororities we had tiers and i was in the bottom tier but we were like top of the bottom tier oh. and it was let me just say this there was another girl named sydney who also does stand-up comedy there's another girl who does like she was doing big stuff at like io and ucb like we were Whoa. we were not that hot but really funny and interesting okay, okay. I like and that, that was kind of our calling card did you also do stand-up at the same time in college no no oh, i okay. didn't do any 
any stand-up or improv college. But she college. does stand up currently. Now, yes. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And she writes a lot of sketch. But okay. I did improv in high school. Okay. I did competitive improv. Oh, Whoa. yeah, yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. 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 That, yeah. So it's like who's lying but competitive for high schoolers. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So AP improv. AP, AP 100% improv. AP improv. Yeah. It's called comedy sports with a Z. Wait, <laughs> I know. I've heard of comedy sports. <laughs> yeah. Because Jason Sudeikis did that. Oh, yeah. That's how he got started in improv and comedy. Is that he's, he did comedy sports. Oh. Yeah. Everyone wore like red and blue shirts. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. Yeah. I've seen. Yeah. I've seen. Yeah. Exactly. And there was a high school league. So we would go downtown and get trained by the professionals. And then we would actually have matches at our schools. Wow. It was really intense, too. Um, and then there was like a tournament at the end of the season. Mm. Yeah. Did you ever get any any like feuds in comedy sports? Feuds with a Z. Oh, yeah. Feuds with a Z. What is drama within competitive improv? So within competitive improv, it was actually really cool that we did all learn together. So we like knew each other when we would go compete against them. Um, but mostly the drama was that some schools were much better than others. And really, it's kind of rigged so the home team always wins. But my school was pretty good. And sometimes we won away matches and the ref would try their hardest to like rig it for the But like some of those teams were bad. Oh. So that was drama sometimes because the audience would vote. So yes. it's like they would all vote. And theoretically, it's like if they like their classmates enough, they'd vote for their classmates. Or their kids. I mean, come on. It was only parents there. Yeah. yeah. Except oh, yeah. for there was yeah. one school where like. Pe- industry came. Industry. <laughs> industry. Well, actually, yes. Yeah. It was like the. um where I'm from in central Indiana is where uh, Ryan Murphy is from. So like there's a couple schools that are huge and they just like refuse to make more high schools in that town so they can have like 11,000 people be the best at every single thing. Mm. Um, and so one the there's two schools in Indiana that are based on like the Glee high schools. Whoa. That he based the their show choir competitions on. So there was just like one big very performing arts high school and they would sell out like students would line up two hours before the match started wow. to get in and watch. That's so Damn. funny. I mean that's probably some of the like Did you feel biggest... really good like they're here for me? Like Honestly, yeah. Cause like we and then you would run through the audience and they would like cheer and shout and like oh, yeah. Oh, so you. Hot yeah. shit for that. It was yeah. it was that's really awesome. kinda cool. And then that team didn't have enough players for one of the matches because it was during a big show choir competition mm-hmm. and a lot of people did both so they thought i was the best on my team and they asked me to be part of their team and actually oh. beat my own high school competing Whoa. with the other so you got poached i got poached and that is big drama you got traded like an all-star player i did yeah. in fact yeah and they had like this special opening that they would do when they came on stage and they're like we're teaching this to you because you are now one of us oh my god imagine it an deal. improv college draft oh <laughs> I an improv draft it. season I remember at the, at the summer camp that I went to, I also later worked there and we wrote sketches for kids uh-huh. and we would have to like draft <laughs> oh my. the kids for our sketches. Um, and it was kind of fun because like, you're kind of like, oh, I want like the kids who are really like good and funny. But sometimes you're like, I can make that kid funny. Like sometimes mm. you're like, hmm. you sense something. You're like, I can pull it out of them. You're like, I can take that kid's strength or their deadpan or whatever. Also, they're like 13. So it's like, whatever. Any yeah. kid I get. Like, it's that's also like barely a kid anymore when it comes to the entertainment industry. Oh, that's baby. a fully formed adult. Yeah. 13? They're making their own choices. They're drinking. They're smoking. <laughs> Ever seen 13 the musical? It's I actually accurate. haven't seen it. Oh, I, I didn't like even know such a thing me. existed. It's rad. <laughs> Really? It's isn't it? I don't want to say that because I think I'm thinking that's right. I also said when you said like uh, like that's practically an adult. I was like, yeah, tell it to Roman Polanski. Oh, oh Lord! Oh. Circling back on Yay. Thirteen, the music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was it was Ariana Grande. It's her first role on Broadway. Yeah. Whoa. Yes. Yeah. That's where she Elizabeth met her best Giles. friend, Aaron. What's his face? Aaron something. Oh, I'm not sure, but Elizabeth Giles was also in it. Okay. Yeah. And who's the uh, Lucas? Like, this is like this is like um. Useless knowledge sports. Okay, this, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. this is AP musical theater. Now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it is. So wait, what? I feel like when I talk to you, you're in that like, there's that part of my brain that comes out that's like, here are all the things I know instead of capitals of states. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty good at those too. Oh, are yeah, you I see it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But you have the energy. South to Dakota. Me. Capital. Oh yeah, what's now. Dakota? The uh, South Dakota. Oh, it's not Bismarck. It's five, four, three. Two, one. I said I'm pretty good at it. Not great. Okay, it's all right. <laughs> Not good. Uh, the South capital of South Dakota is South Dakota. Sioux Falls. Let's look it up. I need to, <laughs> I need to look S-I- it up. S I 
Oh no, I know. I know what S-I- you. I know. Like, Sioux S-I-O-U-X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. I think it's Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and Bismarck, North Dakota. You have the energy to me of someone who was in Thirteen the Musical, and I say oh. that with love. <laughs> That's really kind. Thank you. <laughs> I am so sorry to say it is Pierre. Ooh. It is oh. not Sioux Falls. Okay, that's fair. But I think it should be Sioux Falls. I think I'm right. You know yeah. how it is. What's think... retcon? <laughs> State Petition, capitals. make Sioux Falls uh, the new capital of South Dakota. <laughs> Feels like Zionistic when we say it. Like how they're trying to make like Jerusalem the, <laughs> the center of Israel. <laughs> it's exactly like that. Yes. By, by prob- probably headed by someone called Sid King. <laughs> yeah, true. Ooh. You hear that? <laughs> You're like <laughs> circling back to 13 the musical. Please. <laughs> I, I can talk about Catholicism all day long. Oh, baby. Yeah. But Judaism I, scares me. <laughs> I understand. What was growing up? Did you grow up like super Catholic? Super, super Catholic. Okay. It was weird because I. What makes up? What's the difference between casually Catholic and super Catholic? Um. There are people who just like go to church on Sundays and their families are like, like kind of culture, like the way people are culturally Jewish are like very mm. actively practicing, very observant. I okay. was very observant, okay. but it's weird. My parents weren't really that much, but because my sister and I went to this like Catholic school where the, our, our, our hall of fame, our wall of success is just people who went into the priesthood and became wow. sisters. Wow. Sure. 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 So, and like at least one girl and one boy per class normally went into real, like consecrated religious life, as we call it. Wow. So it was, and like I knew people who converted in high school. It was like pretty intense. Oh my um, goodness. But yeah, I went to mass all the time. I like sang in the choir. Wh- I, what is all the time? Multiple like, days no, a week? Multiple, multiple times a week. Yeah. You'd go at least once during the school week and then you'd of course go on Sunday. Wow. But we had to go with our classes. Oh, oh, so you went to a Catholic high school? Oh, yeah. I went to Catholic school from um, a, like K through 12. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But is, the thing is, I had fun. Okay. Like, it's kind of a vibe for me. Um, and then I got out and I was like, oh, a lot of these things are deeply problematic. But at the time, I was like, small school. I got to do like musicals and cheerlead and like be in the yearbook and yeah. like got to do all this stuff. And. Um, like I got to direct a student play, but then oh, I also, fun. well, that is good. Yeah. So yeah. There, there were definitely good aspects about it. And I liked going to a smaller high school, but then I got out and I was like, oh, um, mm. uh, huh. What was, what was that? What was that process like for you? How did that begin? Like D. De- yeah. <laughs> de- deconstructing. Deconstructing. I was going to say deprogramming. Yeah. Um, basically I went to a big state school. And I joined a sorority and it like became really time consuming. And I like to also keep it up. Like I would have to go before it was just always there. And then I had to really go out of my way to get to mass and stuff like that. And I think I I realized I was kind of just doing it because I was always around it. And I also like not to get deep, but like, I don't know if I really had like a really strong relationship with God or Jesus. I think I just thought that's what I was supposed to be doing. Mm. And then I got there and I was like, oh, there are plenty of people who don't do this and live perfectly fine lives. Mm. I just like really didn't know. I didn't meet a Jewish person until I got to college. Like this is horrible, but I'm willing to say it. I thought that like Jewish people existed in the past, like the way that they basically (laughs) teach about native Americans because basically they were like, oh, like that's that's Old Testament stuff. Yeah, calling it the Old Testament definitely like uh, creates a little bit of a like. There thing, is a yeah. connotation. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know the Old Testament. Right, and From so so I, long ago. I like, didn't. Oh my God. I just didn't. It didn't really register. Yeah. Um. So. Wow. Not so. Yeah. There was a lot to unlearn, and like I did have like a good education, but. Um, right. <laughs> but there was. Were, uh, wait. Were you we ever were, taught about Jewish figures in? Wait. You must know about the country of Israel growing yes. up. So yes. wh- who do you think populated Israel? <laughs> or maybe I, I. I didn't really think about it. Okay, right. So, yeah. You didn't no, think so about it. Is, of course. This yeah. is true. Um. In so my sister's four years older than me, and also went to my Catholic high school. Okay. And they. Like her class asked the so we also had to take theology. Okay. Every you had to take two semesters of theology a year, or we were on trimester, so two trimesters of theology a year, and then your senior year you took a class called apologetics, which is defense of the Catholic faith. So when you went out into the real world and you went to your Catholic or you went to your non-Catholic colleges, you could actively defend the faith. They gave us like pamphlets to hand out and to like to like evangelize. That's cold shit. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, <laughs> but. 
my sister asked her teacher or like they as a class asked the teacher like can we do world religions and he goes well if i introduce you to world religions then you will be tempted that would be like me giving you guys crack i'm astounded mm-hmm. i love that so the jewish thing was bottom of i mean like is it oh yeah that no you, you know had know other you stuff on your plate you had other fish to fry you had so much other shit do you remember t- trying to defend catholicism to people like yes. did you use like the pamphlet yes, yes yes so a lot of times um people well we had to write the pamphlet like that would be like you'd be divided into groups and you had to like create a worksheet and then you had to print off enough copies for everyone in the class and then you were made a folder and you were like taught to carry that folder with you and just like i don't know leave it on the lounge like leave it on the table in the lounge of your dorm um yeah a lot of times because a big one that people get is like you worship mary and that we worship saints and that's not true i can tell you why but do i want to not really um and then there was a lot about like abortion and stuff like that oh, it actually yeah. it used to be required at my high school you would go on the march for life it was required whoa yeah oh my god i did i things. did go twice yeah i have this image in my head of like kind of say people I- like hooking up at the march for life <laughs> <laughs> oh no um my boyfriend and i so i had a very serious boyfriend in high school so serious i never saw his penis ever um <laughs> because it was one of those things Who's where, to like, say he had one we've never oh actually i i do I, how do you think oh. i know what an otphj is okay oh so you felt it you never saw it never saw it that's fascinating <laughs> But, um... Have you ever tried to draw it just from, like, feel? (laughs) (laughs) Draw me, like, one of your penises. Just like, oh, yeah, oh, okay, okay, I think it's yay. (laughs) Oh, my God. No. Well, because it was one of those things where, like, oh, we'll probably get married in, like, two years anyway, so why not just wait? Right. Like, everybody at my high school, like, I really thought that uh, we're not together. He's doing well. Shout out. Um, (laughs) But, like, it was like, oh, well, we're just gonna get married. I remember saying to him, I was like... It's not our fault our bodies want each other. They got married at 14 in the Bible. We didn't want each other. We didn't really want each other, but we did have... You, you wanted want to have sex with another human being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I was, we were far too scared of each other. Okay. It was, okay. it was like, our, I was scared of him. Well, I think he I was ask, scared of me. Were you scared when you had your first OTPHJ? I mean, I wasn't receiving OTPHJs. Yeah, Lucas, I was. I was kind of just... I think I was just kind of more punching it. Like, I don't think it was <laughs> success- <laughs> not successful. But okay, it was, that um, was back in the day when, like, in high school, you would, like, make eye contact with somebody and they would immediately get a boner. Yeah. So it didn't take much. And, like, that wasn't just him. That was, that like, still happens everybody. for Lucas. I oh, <laughs> still happening. Uh, right yeah. now? Oh, He's been uh, rock hard the entire okay, maybe just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, be a little modest and cover your... <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Your ankles. This is a this is an exercise dress, so I could go on a marathon run after this. I've got shorts, full full body coverage Bike underneath. Shorts, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah. in I'm in light athleisure because I have a softball practice later tonight. Oh hello. Oh yeah. hell yeah. yeah. Yeah yeah Very cool. Very cool. Wow. I don't know if I'm gonna practice in my Bella where the hell have you been loca shirt, but <laughs> well because you, you don't want to get it too sweaty and ruin it. Yeah, and also I can't play baseball, the Cullen sport, with Jacob on my shirt. That is so true. You know? Like, that would be... I can't believe what I'm listening to right now. <laughs> so, the, so the Catholicism stuff, yes. no big deal. But the the Twilight talk, that's where you draw the line? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Wait, like this? Yeah, well, go on. Speaking, of, speaking yes. of Twilight, so you know that it's like based on like the Mormon church. Yes. Um, I did not know this. Yes. Yeah, it is. You know how Bella it, uh, has that baby that nearly kills her? Yes. That was... There was talk... I guess like not amongst the people, but like in the book that it's like, oh, you, you should get an abortion. You should save the babies. You should save your life. And Bella's like, no, it's our baby. That was Jacob's stance. Yeah. Jacob is pro-choice. Yep. <laughs> and Rosalie? Rosalie's a bitch. Wait, who's Rosalie? Um, one of the Cullen sisters. Oh, okay, okay. So okay. vampire. Yes. Mm-hmm. Rosalie's very tragic. She was um, really pretty and that was her plight. <laughs> I mean, I really relate to that. <laughs> it was like, wasn't she like violently attacked and like made a vampire because she was dying? Yes. <laughs> I'm not laughing at her pain. Wasn't, well, I, okay. I'm laughing at her pain. I okay. haven't seen any of the other to- uh, Twilight movies besides the first one, but isn't that kind of what happens with Bella? Like, is that giving birth to a vampire would kill her? But Bella's and so she's right. made a choice. Right. Bella's like, I want to be a vampire right now. Like, she's okay. wanted to be a vampire the whole time. 
like the whole time so there's a at the beginning at the sorry at the end of the first book when edward has to like suck the venom out from yes. the one that's chasing her i forget his name um carlisle's like you have to make the choice turn her now or later also he has a psychic sister and she's like it's just a matter of time she's going to become a vampire and edward's like no but you know what edward is an abstinence king he waited until marriage which was 120 years or something like that <laughs> Well, I do think part of it was he didn't get random erections because he didn't need to, like, he didn't have blood circulating. Well, he's already kind of dead, so wouldn't he already kind of have rigor mortis? He, yeah. It just I, sticks up constantly? Yeah. I'm an optimist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, you are. Yeah, that's an optimist. That's beautiful. View. I've heard that it, the reason that he was able to impregnate Bella and get an erection was because his sperm is really venom. Whoa. And so it was poison. Yeah. I mean, mine I mean is that also that relates to the Mormon Church, which is what you were talking I about. I think you'll find that all cum is poison. I do find yes. that. That's why I avoid it at all costs. Good. I'm <laughs> avoiding it by with my monogamous relationship with a woman. I'm like, mm. oh no, cum. That's how I avoid it. I'm yeah. like, it's like a fake relationship, so I can avoid cum at all costs. And so you'll stay. <laughs> it's your alibi. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, so you'll be young forever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, You're not being poisoned. Have you seen the people online who say that like uh, rubbing cum on your face like keeps your skin young? Uh-huh. They're... I've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not participating. Oh, and I'm not suggesting anyone do that. I'm not suggesting anyone do that. I'm just saying there are people who say that. Lucas, and... where have you seen that? Mm-hmm. Um, in my mirror when I say it to myself. <laughs> hey, uh-huh. that's why your yeah. skin's so good. Are you going to... Yeah, you're gonna trans. You're transition your content to oh <laughs> to, to come <laughs> come only education. Yeah, to go. Oh God. Hey guys, why is it that no one is talking about this? I just put cum on my face, and it's become the most sumptuous, gorgeous face. Goodbye. Sumptuous, sumptuous gorgeous face. <laughs> goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. You like come, and you're like, oh, goodbye. Yeah, that's what my penis says. Uh. You're, it talks. It it has arias. It sings. It <laughs> it sings. I don't want to know. Oh yeah. That's why I avoid it. Okay, so the Mormon Church. Yes, the Mormon Twilight's Church. Twilight's based on the Mormon, Mormon Church. Church. Yeah, that's I basically I... all I have for you. Okay. <laughs> right, 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 right. I think we've like talk, we've talked we've yeah, talked yeah. about that. Don't so worry about no, it. but so you're mm-hmm. you're was it in college that you sort of had this change of religious thinking? Yes. So um so you first started noticing how other people live their lives, mm-hmm. and then what was the realization that made you look inward? Um, so there wasn't like some big moment of reckoning um which i think is the case for a lot of people like Mm -hmm. it's not some big grand step back um it's like a slow descent i guess um but i don't know i felt guilty about like not going to church and stuff for a while and then i would like let that guilt built up build up and then i would go to confession and then like go to mass again and then i was like i'm just really not enjoying it and then also like it gave me a lot of anxiety like being in churches where i didn't really know people so i guess it boils down to i liked catholicism because of the community everybody was doing it like all of my friends were there it was a sense of community which is why a lot of people really like religion and then when i went to college like i didn't have that i didn't really bond with any of the people there Mm. i didn't i realized like over half of the congregation was just the young Republicans. And I was like, I don't really think I agree with that either. Um, And it kind of, yeah, I just like took a step back. And then I really, for a long time, just did not think about it. And I was like, it just kind of is happening, whatever. I'm stepping away. Um, And then like only like recently have I like begun unpacking a lot of it and realizing like, how I actually feel like do I feel spiritual do I still believe in God but I do find myself a lot of times like falling back on apologetics if people like say something wrong like the other day I saw somebody wearing a rosary and I was like you can't wear that it's not for wearing they're they're, they look like necklaces but you can't wear that around your neck and I'm like literally why do I care I haven't been been I haven't been to mass in five years except for the like my you just immediately wedding. just revert. Yeah, to, yeah you immediately revert. Yeah. And then I also saw somebody, this is dark. Um, I was down on the train platform when somebody got hit by a train. Oh, my God. Um, I didn't see it happen, but I was like, yeah, I was down there, there right yeah, after yeah. it happened. And I was like, uh, I don't even know what to do. And I was like, the most reverent thing I know what to do is like, I just bowed my head and started like saying the Our Father. Oh, oh wow. yeah. And I was like, I don't. Yeah. So there's there's still a lot. We're still working through it. Still a lot to unpack. But 
um, I'm glad that I'm working on it now. You know, that is wonderful. Well, I think okay. prayer is something different than like dogma because I think mm. prayer is kind of nice. It's nice to I, I sometimes still I mean, mainly if I'm on an airplane, mm. I, I do be praying because yes. I'm a fr- c- but like I think it's like the adventure sports people and like people in these like really like high powered, like risky jobs who are like still really like believers in like a God of mm. some kind because mm-hmm. It's easy where we are in New York and like the comedy scene to like really think we are the only people out there. And I think it's because we don't do anything particularly scary or death defying. Mm-hmm. There is an enormous amount of privilege. Uh, it, it is yeah. There is an enormous amount <laughs> yes. of privilege which, that comes with being able to be non-religious. I think there is. Yes. No, absolutely. There really is. And I will say like I was I was raised here. I also wasn't raised with any religion. But I will say that when I'm in a really compromised emotional space i will i won't say to god i was i will say almost just to get the words out i will say to whomever may be listening mm-hmm. i'm going through it right now like especially like when my dad died last year i was like mm-hmm. if my dad is anywhere i hope he's at peace i hope he knows that i lo- love him mm-hmm. and stuff. just like just wanting to utter those things and get them out of your head that's yeah. the that's the best thing possible and that you never know who's listening so you, it's just like yeah. yeah, it's just like, yeah, it's, it's just a, huge, a good, it's, it's a huge comfort. Exactly. It's a huge comfort. And I think that's the really sad part about it is that like Catholicism, a lot of people and other religions too, like a lot of people I know have like a lot of religious based trauma. Mm. And so the things that were so comforting to them, like that's a tool that's been taken away. Mm. And so that's really hard to work through. And a lot of people have like, yeah, replace it with therapy. That's a normal, that's one of the, that's a good thumbs up, like learn some new tools. But, um, when you're young, yeah, like I remember going through, honestly, to be to be honest, I created a lot of my own problems. Um, but when I was going through a problem, it was nice to have someone to talk to. So my friend Becca, our friend Becca Stevenson, um, yes. she went to, she has a dichotomy that she likes to call. So I went to a rules church and she went to vibes church, as she likes oh, to say. Oh, yeah. Where I'm, it's I'm like, unfamiliar. Please explain. So a rules church is where, yeah, you follow the rules and if you do that, then congrats, you're doing great. And um, if you don't, then you are bad and you're wrong. Right. Um, but we have the gift of confession, the sacrament mm-hmm. of confession that you can always write yourself um, with God. And a lot of Christian denominations don't have that. So they just have vibes. vibes. And so it's like, God's always there for you. You can't, he loves you so much. There's nothing you can do that mm. he would ever like not love you as much. So um at, at a vibes church it's just like it's a comfort when you need him and he's always something you can lean on in catholicism it's like i made my dad angry mm. yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. like and then like, yeah, that's yeah. where a lot of the guilt comes from obviously oh, so yeah. um but it can, I've, I've heard too it can be really hard to step away from a vibes church because there's nothing like oh i broke a rule it didn't feel that bad maybe i don't want to do this anymore yeah. it's like you have to really consciously like work through it so there you wow. go yeah. Did you by any chance see um, a, a documentary on Netflix? I forget what it's called, but it's about three people who were raised Hasidic Jewish but have left. And it's the most harrowing thing to watch because you see a woman who later, after the documentary, finds out that she's queer. But mm-hmm. she um, she's raised in it. She like gets married at 18. She has seven kids by the time she's like 26. Mm-hmm. And then she she has a very abusive husband. She tries she separates, tries to adopt all her. She tries to get custody of all her kids, but they end up all getting separated. And that you one of the last sh- <clears throat> one of the last shots is you see her on the phone with one of her daughters, saying how much she misses her and how much she hates this new living arrangement and just like how heartbroken she is. And another one is like a dude whose name is Loser. <laughs> Um, L- his name is loser. his name is loser L U Z E R. His name is loser. Like sports. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like that. Just like that. Comedy sports. No. Oh, Comedy, oh loser. God. <laughs> Comedy losers. <laughs> Comedy losers. But um, he's like he's a married man with two kids. He calls up his mom, says, "I don't think I want to be religious anymore," and then he's just immediately excommunicated mm-hmm. from his family. And you see him at a, a Shabbos dinner, a Friday night dinner with like a bunch of other ex Hasidics, but still want to like carry on the tradition and find community. Yeah. And that's the hardest thing is that they have their community robbed from them. Yes. The moment they want to deviate even slightly, not even like, like being atheist, but just like not Hasidic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's, 
it, their it community, yeah. their finances, like everything they've known. And a lot of times in those communities, I don't like want to speak ill of them, but it's like they don't have like a super robust education. So like they don't have as, as many skills. You're absolutely right. Um, That's another huge element is mm-hmm. that is that they have no life skills. They're, like one guy, he's like he's in his car on his phone, just like Googling everything because he's like, I didn't know all this information was available. He said, thank God for Google. He's like, There's so, I can just look up anything. It's yeah. Yeah. yeah goodness a lot of times in those like ultra restrictive kind of communities and again like i don't feel like you're speaking ill because it's not like, at all no, it's, no, no. it's also you're not, saying a fact it's, it's a also fact. not every you know no 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 no, no, no community no. but like there are some kind of like any restrictive religion it's like google is often like not available to people because if you yeah. google something you might find out something bad about the religion oh yeah mm-hmm. like that's what happened with david miscavige's dad in scientology yes because david miscavige gave him an ipad oh this, this is birthday. the ipad thing yes I've how this. fucking crazy is this and david miscavige's dad googled scientology because he was like i want to see what wonderful things people are saying about Scientology. And he was serious. He was like, I want to see how wonderful everyone's talking about it. And he like finds like Scientology is a cult. And he was like, wait, what? And he like keeps reading. He's like, holy shit. And then he left. And now he like David Miscavige still runs the church with his boyfriend, Tom Cruise. (laughs) That is an insane thing to leave a cult that your son is the president of. In the entire world, that is what your son runs. That I can't imagine that state of mind. No. What a thing to realize. No, Ugh. I I don't know what I would do in that situation either. But I guess what I would kind be of your first figured day? out. First yeah. day first when day? you realize that, what would you do? <laughs> if you realize your child go on is a long the, walk. Is the, yes. <laughs> okay. Be like, where did I get this child? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What would be my first order get a of business? Yeah. Oh. yeah, I'm like, I think I would eat a super fun meal. <laughs> For sure. And then put on a super fun outfit. You know I love an outfit. You love an outfit. <laughs> Looping back around. Looping back around. To oh. 45 minutes ago, baby. I know what I would do. I'd go to Disney World and that's that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to Disney World. Great, great I'm choice. going to Disney World in August. I haven't oh, been since I was nice. a kid. Yeah. I've never been. <gasps> You've never been? I've never I'm, been. I'm a certified Disney adult. And I'm oh. here to destigmatize it. And it shows. No, no but, it does. Um, I'm, I'm wearing a Snoopy sweater. I don't know. Show. Of yeah, course yeah, yeah. it does. I'm just stylish for a Disney adult. What so would I you can, say? What I would can you cosplay s- as a normal person. Oh, oh okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that's your first outfit. So this is the person. Catholic to Disney adult pipeline. Mm. You know what? That might that really might be. There might be <laughs> something might there. Be um, there might be something there. Uh, I really didn't get into Disney until I was older. But also, okay, I, I want to clarify I'm into like theme parks in general and like how they okay. operate theme and like rule. theming yeah. and stuff like that. And also my whole family is really into it. My sister is a Disney animator. Um, like she directs so cool. a TV show. Oh, Such she's a cool very job. cool. Um, on Monday, I'm going to France to go to the um, Annecy Animation Fel- Festival, which is Whoa. the International Film Festival. Yeah, very That's exciting. That's so awesome. Yes, we're very excited. Um, and we get to go, not because of her, but she's been before and it's like a whole thing. We're going as a family. It's nice. Um, where was I going with this? See, literally, you just got me excited. I'm like, I get to talk about Disney for Disney. 30 no, yeah, you're destigmatizing the Disney. Destigmatizing, so, how yes. you got into Disney. How, how you got, got into yeah. Disney. So um, we would. I, my fa- parents and like their families are from California so when we like visit my grandma we'd like go to Disneyland for a day but yes. I never I didn't go to Disney World so Disneyland is one in LA and that's like two parks yes. it's really it's in Anaheim it's in Orange County and then Disney World is like the huge one in Florida yes okay um just so we're all on the same page um and that one is like a much bigger deal it's like more expensive there's more things to do the Disneyland you can like do in a day and like easy peasy okay. um so i didn't go to disney world until i was a senior in high school and i remember like driving under the gates and being like this is really big this is really exciting and i think just from then on i saw yeah like how everything worked and i got into it like later in life from a senior year from my senior year in high school and then i just had the opportunity to um like i had an annual pass because i was going to la so much to like see my sister and the rest of my family that mm. i got to go to disneyland a lot and once you get to go a lot you like there's not a lot of pressure to like ride all the rides and stuff like that Mm. you can just like go and like have fun and it's really a space where like you feel super free like you know where you're going you just get to go on a ride you get to drink with your family like we we have a lot of like some of my best family memories are there yeah and like we've had like deep important conversations we've cried we fought and then we watched phantasmic and it's like all is right with the world um i also like was ran like a disney fashion blog for a while 
wait okay when you say a disney fashion blog what mm-hmm. do you mean do you mean like it was really just an instagram where i like styled outfits and then sometimes some people sent me free oh, okay. t-shirts which was nice oh, oh okay, that's okay, really okay. nice i yeah. would love to see that even if it's inactive i'd love to see it oh yeah you can i'm not gonna drop the handle because i don't want to but um <laughs> <laughs> it's there i'll show you um yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. um yeah but i actually met a lot of like like-minded people um and we would like all meet up in the parks and we would drink and then my mom would be mad and then i would go meet mickey and mouse and i'd be like I love the outfits you're wearing. You are doing so good. And <laughs> um, yeah. How so often do you think they get that? People who are like on some sort of substance mm-hmm. who are just like, you look amazing. You look so good. Like A lot. A lot. Yeah. A lot. Surely but you've it's... seen the video of uh, the Peter Pan twink and mm-hmm. the evil queen <laughs> fighting yes. each other. What? One of my I favorite not. videos. So there was a there was a Peter Pan, I believe, at Disneyland. I'm not sure that like became a big Tumblr sensation, and people would go to the park just to find this specific Peter Pan and like interact with him. I was never part of that. I do p- personally draw the line at like cosplay. Mm. I don't pretend to be other people. Like I'm not opposed to it. I just have never done it. Okay. Um, but people would go like, they would sexualize someone who's supposed to be like a child. It yeah. was, it's not the best. <laughs> no. As Peter Pan no. might say, he's British. It's not the best. <laughs> I always found it weird, though, that in like the Disney like cartoon version, he has an American accent. Yeah, that's Peter true. Pan. Also, um, it's John- Michael, the baby, he also has an American accent, whereas the other two have English accents. That was always that always struck me so weird. I've never thought about it, but that is oh a problem. God, I've never yeah. thought about that. Well, it's like in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, it takes place in LA, but they have the most New Yorky New York accent. Uh, yeah. Right. Who Framed Roger Rabbit slaps. Oh, oh so great good. movie. So Incredible. Good. Great movie. My that was also one of the it's that's a movie my dad always it was very rare that my dad was in a into a movie that had any kind of animation, but he was like, That's an extraordinary movie. Who Framed Roger Rabbit, he always had a lot of respect for that, how they did it and the story and everything. Um, If you guys have Disney Plus, there's a show called um, Prop something. And it's like... Prop they, 8? Pro, no. It, <laughs> you know Prop, Prop 8. 8. Yeah. Um, My favorite. <laughs> you got so close to the mic, you're like, yeah, let's talk about gay rights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like I need to represent. Go on. <laughs> Go on, straighty. Um, um but they have like a history of like how they did all the props and like how they did a lot of the physical gags and like they show you how they did benny the cab and they basically built this go-kart thing where the driver was basically like a stunt driver is like basically laying down and they animated it over him whoa because the human so this is actor like a very, was inside of it a specific grander making of of a lot of uh, yes, effects yes that's fascinating and then they um because a lot of it was more physical than you think like physical effects um like when, oh, i'm not surprised when roger rabbit goes through the window hmm. they had like one shot and they had basically like laser cut very loosely his outline oh. and then they just pulled it with the fishing wire wow but they had one shot at it. I mean, they could have, I guess they probably could have redone it, but the budget no, like went over. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. But that's a very, um, it's like props to history or something like that. And mm. I highly recommend it. That I want to see now. It's that cool. Because I love any making of. And they're not doing it anymore. Of. Where is our making of content and where's our blueprint? Yes. No one's talking about this. this no one's talking about this. this. Is, okay, this actually is a negative side of everything being online, everything streaming. You need the DVD. You need the DVD so you uh, can go in the special features. So bad. You need like, that. You need that director commentary. You need the blooper reel. You need David Fincher talking over the scene where Ben Affleck is in the airport in Gone Girl. And it's like, <laughs> oh, he wouldn't wear a Yankees hat and halted production for yeah. two days. You heard about that, right? I did not. Ben did Affleck in Gone Girl was supposed to be like a Yankee. His character was supposed to be a Yankees fan. Uh-huh. But as you know, Ben Affleck, do or die Boston, would not wear a Yankees hat, halted production for two days over it because him and David Fincher were fighting. He ended up wearing a Mets hat. Did they go fisticuffs? Because that'd be fun. That would be <laughs> I love that. I kind of understand it. I wouldn't wear a Boston hat under any circumstances, I think. Because yeah. you grow up in New York and you're like, oh. But what happened if I just like forced one on you? Would, would your head burn? While you were sleeping style? Yeah. You're in a coma and it's like. <laughs> I would you wake I would, up with a Boston hat on. I would genuinely be like, what an upsetting prank. 
If, if that's, <laughs> is that how we know you're you're kidnapped and um, you make like a I, I'm really I'm okay video, but you're wearing a Boston hat 100%. and that's how we know. If that ever happens to me, I either don't know what's on my head or I'm not okay. Mm. Right. Yeah. What's, what's your tell in your hostage video? Yeah, how do we know you're kidnapped? Oof. Oh, that's tough. Oh my God, that's really, <laughs> I've never thought about this before. Oh, am I tell? Um... Well, the thing is, I, I naturally, like, stutter and fumble on my words. So if mm -hmm. I'm, like, really measured in how I'm speaking, you know that I'm in an altered state of mind where I'm, like, really rehearsed and I'm and I, like, can't fail. Okay. When, I, when I'm in a real emergency, I will be very calm and straight with my speech. Interesting. If in you ever seem sane to you, it's wrong. <laughs> yeah. Is there something you would say, though, that's like, oh, we know he would never say that? <laughs> uh... Women I are love people. my co-host. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh no, he's been kidnapped. Oh, freaking yep. crazy! So, well, I, I guess we, I guess we know it's that you love Twilight. Yeah. Oh yeah. If yeah, you start, yeah, because Twilight, you drew the line. Religion, great, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fundamentalist as oh, possible. Do you know what it would be if I started off by saying, as a Gemini, if I if uh, I did that, that's how you mm -hmm. that's how you know something's something's amiss. What's your sign? I'm a Taurus. Interesting. Mm -hmm. But I always say. Um, it, for me, it's less astrology and more my like crippling ADHD as a child. Like I'm pretty mm. sure that's what form, form, formed my personality. Mm. Okay. Um, not the Myers Briggs, not the Enneagram. You want to know something interesting? No. All of those things for me match with Jerry Seinfeld. We have the same birthday, so we're the same <laughs> sign: Myers Briggs and um, Enneagram type. You're, that's why. That's why you. Well, you are a Jewish man. You so are. I'm. I'm a Jewish man. I always Sydney see Seinfeld. That in you. Yes. Sydney Seinfeld. <laughs> Well, well it's probably because I'm actually, I actually have never dated a teenager, even when I was a teenager. So. Oh, <laughs> the night is young. <laughs> yeah. So I if you're dating like, a teenager, we know you've been kidnapped. <laughs> yes. It, actually, if I say I love Jerry Seinfeld, that's how you know. I love, oh, okay. I love, I love sharing all my things with Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Comedians in cars getting coffee. Yeah. Yeah. If I ever see you driving, it's I'll more be like, like comedians, comedian in car cutting breaks. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually if I say um we went on a lovely bike ride today I don't know how to ride a bike so that's my real tell anybody oh, out there I don't know how to ride a bike I that don't is really good. I don't really know how to drive and I can barely swim so New York is the city for me yeah oh, yeah, yeah, I think yeah it yeah. might be the only city for you wow. it's or Europe or Europe my my dad famously well, there, there's a lot of bicycle riding in Europe they do there they is. love they love a bicycle actually Amsterdam would be the worst place for me I get hit by a bike and then tossed into the canal and I'm just done yeah, yeah that's true, a bad city for you switch. so your dad famously said what oh my dad is famously a like nationally recognized swim coach wait why didn't he teach you swimming or did he try and it didn't work? It just, I, so when I was younger, very sickly, of course, um, as all the greats are. As all the great um, Jewish had, men are. As yeah. all the great Jewish men are. Actually, I, I might, I, am I allowed to say this? I might not be Jewish because my stomach works just fine. You that's can fine. say it. Okay. You can say it. Um, you that's can say the only way, that's the only well, way. Well, can I know, say I I'm, I'm half Jewish and I have the most ironclad GI tract. Nothing gets in the way of it. Can't really, I think I have IBS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, but I had three sets of tubes. I had a lot of ear infections when I was younger. Did you know about oh, tubes in your ears? I, no. I did not. Um, so basically, they're like these little tubes they put in your ear to help them like drain normally so you wouldn't get as many ear infections. Okay. One set is like pretty extreme. I had three sets, which is a lot. So okay. they would fall out and then they put new ones in every few years. Um, and you can't submerge your head all the way if you have tubes in your ears. So like there was three whole summers of my life I couldn't oh, swim. But okay. also I was a really competitive dancer and did a lot of musical theater. So I wasn't really like around the pool with the cool kids. I um, okay. didn't really have to worry about that so much. Unless you were singing Fabulous from High School Musical. Which was my ringtone for four years. Ah, oh, <laughs> so good. Yes, yes. So, but she doesn't really get in the pool either. I guess she kind of, does she fall in at some point? Oh yeah, and then Vanessa Hudgens' body double famously has to save her. Do you know <laughs> yeah, about this? I remember that, yes! Yeah! So in yes, High School Musical 2. knowledge coming back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry we're just like pop-up videoing or like oral pop-up video. Oh, but, this happens every episode. <laughs> um, so basically in High School Musical 2, um, Sharpay falls into the pool and Vanessa Hudgens' character is a lifeguard for the summer. Okay. It takes place at that country club. And um, it's a stunt double that jumps into the pool, but it's so obviously a stunt double. <laughs> yeah, it's so and it's not like right. there's like a full body shot of her face. Um, and you can look it up. It's it's actually 
it's funnier that I'm telling you this. Don't look it up. It's not that great of a moment. Okay. But no, it's pretty great. It's just so obviously it's a completely so I love, different person. I love people finding freeze frames where someone's body double is just not disguised at all. Right. It's, it's like a, so funny. For a 12 year old boy, it's like a 45 year old woman. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. It feels like they like took a PA off the set and they were like, can you stand in for Vanessa Hudgens? And then Vanessa Hudgens didn't want to jump in the water. So they were like, can you jump in the water? Well, they probably couldn't get her wet. Yeah. Well, it's also, like, a huge liability thing. So, like, I said, oh, I do a lot of... can Vanessa Hudgens not swim? Well, it's just, like, it's a liability thing to, like, put your actors in the pool. Like, I... Like I said, I do background, and I did, like, a pool scene, and it was, like, special ability, and I got, like, a special rate, and then there was somebody in the pool with us, like, a scuba diver that was, yeah. like, under the water to be out of the shots to, like, make sure none of us drowned. I was in... It was, like, to my waist, and I was playing volleyball because it was, like, a pool party scene, yeah, yeah. and they still had all of these extra precautions. <laughs> so it's, there like, very serious. There was a scuba serious. diver in, like, two-foot water. <laughs> well, it was, like, a pool, so he was at... The, I was, like, in the shallow end, and he was in the, he was in the deeper end, but basically, yeah. But then there were stunt people they who were <laughs> doing backflips into the pool. Yeah. Oh Time Traveler's Wife, the new HBO show. Oh. <gasps> I'm going to watch it just for you now. It's, yeah. I am so pale, you can't miss me. <laughs> and I'm in this like, I'm in this like 2000s bikini. And it's just like, that's a pale girl. And my arm, I'm like trying to catch a volleyball and my arms are so gangly above my head. Not my best work. <laughs> it's just like, I look like a rag doll and I'm just like, and there's like hot guys who are teasing us. And it's like, they weren't teasing me because they wanted to get with me. It's like, I'm someone's little sister. And they're just like, yeah, oh. fuck this kid. <laughs> I'm sure you look great. I'm sure, sure you look gorgeous, great. darling. I'm sure you do. Yes. Do you know who also looks gorgeous? Are you talking about our listeners? I think I am. So our listeners write in every week with little tidbits, okay. little things. Either they want advice or they just want us to talk about their Indeed. lives. And there's some okay. interesting ones this week. I have, just I have one. Seen. I yeah. have one. I have one pulled up. Hey, co-host and co-host, I'll let you decide which is which. Mm. Um, 16-year-old male here. There is a girl from my theater class who I am 98% sure likes me. She texts me to ask how my night was almost every night. As additional evidence, my phone has begun to recommended heart emojis to accompany every sentence I text her, regardless of context. I think she is extremely cute and funny, but there is one problem. My dad is a pastor, and he's currently interviewing for this a couple. Is perfect. This, this is perfect. This is perfect. Spectacular for you. Uh -huh. Okay, my dad is a pastor, and he's currently interviewing for a couple of positions across the country. It is highly likely that he will end up receiving one of the jobs. I know I can't keep leading her on, knowing it probably won't go anywhere. But I also don't want her to stop texting me because she is so much fun to talk to. What should I do? P.S. People on my bus think that I'm insane because I randomly burst out into laughter while listening to your podcast on my morning ride to school. Thank you for all the more enjoyable mornings that you have given me. Thank you so much for saying that. That's so kind That's of you. That's very sweet. Well, this is a My lovely, this is a lovely fella. I really like this, but oh, this is, this is a rough, oh, damn. Well, I would say. Not where I thought oh. the pastor thing was going. Yeah, same. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought we had a footloose situation on our hands, but he's just going yeah, to, no. he just might move. That was the whole problem. <laughs> My dad's a, pan, a pastor and he won't let anybody dance. Yeah. <laughs> so weird. Um, God damn. This is, this, this is just sad because it feels like he has a good thing going and he's, and it, probably gonna maybe I mean, or i would say maybe don't necessarily break things off and say hey i like you but this cannot go but maybe start talking about if, if not it happened already start talking about the fact that you go and hey my dad may it may get this job and i have to move soon mm -hmm. um you're also so close to being 18 like you're 16 like this is this is a tough time because like yeah. you probably i don't know if you've lived your whole life in one spot or maybe you've moved but like to move so close to being 18 that's just that sucks. Like you want to be able to see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right in the middle. It's yeah. I just start talking with it and mm -hmm. like soft approaching the subject to her. That's the best I can offer. What about you? What about you guys? I was going to say that's a lot of pressure to put on something that doesn't actually exist yet. Exactly. Yeah. That's Which is a very true. high school thing to do. And yeah. like I, I do it now currently probably <laughs> yeah um like okay so our wedding date is march 17th um, <laughs> yeah. and yep. it's this man i accidentally sent a rose to on hinge um <laughs> but i think uh, yeah just like be like hey hey yeah just be up front because you're gonna put all this pressure on it and that's just gonna make it worse and then you're gonna be embarrassed that you didn't give it a real shot mm. like don't do it all in your head yeah live live your life out Mm -hmm. I think that's my best advice. Yes. Actually live your life out and be like, I, I think I like you too. And mm. let's just keep talking. Also, 
I think being young is the perfect time for a long distance relationship. Mm. I see that. I think, yeah. Describe why. This is interesting. I think it's um a good time to work on communication mm, yes. and do that early. And instead of like glomming onto somebody that you're like physically with all the time, um, I think it would be good practice. And then maybe if it if it goes somewhere or you end up going to the same school or something like that, mm. like in the future, there's always that. But right now, if she's just texting you, I hope you had a nice night. That's a lot yeah. of it's a lot of projecting, but I'm right there with you. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's I think that's very good. What about you? Guys? I also think like you can treat this person as a friend. If like you're struggling with the fact that you might have to move because your dad's a pastor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You could like simply talk to this person about that. If you like texting with them, part of it is like, oh, they're also my friend. So that's something to take into account. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. They can just have a friend. Friendship yeah. is right. That's my advice. Have a friend. Um, friendship is the new sexy. That Friendship is the new sex. Friendship. Eye contact is the new sex. Eye contact We're is the new sex. We're all having sex right yeah. now. We're all having sex First right now. First base is sex. Second yeah. base is eye contact. <laughs> and third base is the Darcy hand holding. Yeah. <laughs> 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 And a home run is uh, when you're playing baseball with the Twilight family <laughs> and you hit a ball not as far as they would. But they I thought you were about to say home base is Settlers of Catan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so true. You hit a ball not as far as they would, but they still pretend to go all the way out into the forest mm. to catch the ball. You Which you think is, is a nicer thing than them giving up their lives to protect this one random human? I mean, After I think that's just stupid. Up? I think it's delusional. I think, to be honest, Bella's not worth it. Bella's not Whoa. worth it. Whoa. Uh, Attack Gabby in the comments. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> they'll agree. I think they'll agree. I have no opinions. <laughs> No, go on. Hi, Meerkats. I have a bit of a problem. Like regular high school shenanigans, this is another high schooler. I very much have a crush on a good friend of mine that's mm. already dating someone else. Mm. And though almost everyone says just go for it, this I'm nervous about. What a funny link. This I'm nervous <laughs> about. Bungee jumping cool. This I'm nervous about. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a tough one. Well, if is your friend like really happy in that relationship? In which case, I don't know. If I was in this individual's mm -hmm. position, I probably wouldn't say anything. If I'm being realistic, I probably wouldn't have the courage. Even if people on a hilarious podcast told me to go for something, I don't think I would. I don't say go for it, but do... Once again, the best thing you can do is let it exist. Like, keeping it inside is bad. So just be like, I have a crush on you. I know it can't go anywhere, but I just want to let you know where I'm at. Because it's worse if you're just, like harboring that i think mm. yeah but if it's also not that serious like your crush you're just kind of like no it said very serious crush did it mm. say serious yeah word for uh, word? very much have a crush on a good friend of mine okay. mm -hmm. it matters i think how long you've had the crush i also think a lot of crushes are mutual because i don't think you would feel that way if they didn't to some extent feel it back i can mm. confirm this is not the case <laughs> Except for Lucas, because uh, yeah. Luke, uh, some sometimes crushes are very sad and weird, and that's that's just the sad truth. Well, sometimes they're not a crush; they're like a coping mechanism. <laughs> yeah, sometimes Whoa. you're just so sad and pathetic and strange that wow. you know you're just going through life crushing, <laughs> yeah, and getting your soul crushed at that. Mm -hmm. uh, Lucas, do you, do you relate to that at all, or? Or am I am I off the mark? I zoned out uh, thinking about killing myself. What? No. <laughs> no. 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 Womp, womp. Womp, womp. Womp, womp. Killing myself. Womp. <laughs> Boo. Boo. Not so good. Oh. Uh, yeah. But yeah. The, yeah. Uh, yeah. If if you're really emotionally taxed by maintaining a friendship with someone that you feel like you can't talk about your feeling but you want to, and it's like too much for you, then do whatever you need to to stay sane. Basically. very true which is i think why i'm like yeah just put it out there because then after you're gonna be like that was silly it's gonna be like one tough day and then you're gonna be like that was yeah. silly i don't actually have feelings for this person or also yeah. it worked also out maybe, or whatever also maybe speaking to another friend you can trust who mm -hmm. knows you both of you guys better and you say hey i have these feelings uh maybe you say i i, I don't know if i can go on being friends with this person because i like them so much or if you feel like you don't then continue being friends and hope it pat or something changes yeah but um but yeah that's all, yeah, that's it. All I can say. All right. Do you have another one pulled up or do you want I me to? I do. Okay, hit it. Hi. 
Um, I Hi, it's... Wait, no, I'm going to do this one. Hey, lovely host. I'm going to a family reunion soon, and all of them are racist and homophobic. I'm dyeing my hair pink before the reunion. What else should I do to piss them off? This is a fun question. This is a great question. Mm. Uh, get a Bluetooth speaker and play Gaga nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> hand out pamphlets. <laughs> Every yeah, time they say pamphlet, something, you just yeah. hand them a pamphlet. Yeah. <laughs> or my, my sister loves to do this. Um, so my sister is um, a lesbian. She lives with a woman and also went to my Catholic high school. Mm-hmm. And every June, she donates a, a, a sum of money to the Trevor Project in my high school's name. Whoa, that's cool. That's very so, cool. So uh, if you have the means to do it, just be like, I will, like, I'm so excited to be back at this reunion to honor the family. I made mm. a huge donation to the Trevor <laughs> Project, <laughs> to the Trevor nice. Project. in the family's name. What if, okay, what if you, what, okay, to this person who wrote in, what if you give them a, a card that says uh, a donation has been made to X charity in your name? Yes. To like, um, yeah, like the Trevor Project or like a Black Trans Bail Fund or something like mm-hmm, that. Like mm-hmm. there are a lot of things, yeah. I also think the thing with racist and homophobic people is that everything kind of pisses them off. Mm. Like it's not mm. if you if you hate other demographics, you probably just don't like life very much. So just do things that don't that they won't immediately like. Just, Buy them DVDs of musicals. Yeah, go up to bring them and, Jello shots. <laughs> bring je- yes, just yeah, do yeah. something weird. Hold a bottle of wine and say it's your baby, and ask yes. if they want to hold it too. I did that once. I did that, that once too. And my, me and my friend became best friends at um, the Italian fest of a local um, parish, and there was a five-pound bag of cannoli cream, and we carried it around. We named it Calvin, and we pretended it was our son for like months. It lived it. We That's would hilarious. alternate whose fridge it was in. Yes! Can you believe I didn't have sex with my high school boyfriend? <laughs> I can believe it. But you know what? Yeah, you should this do that. This is our son. It's cannoli cream. Say hi to him. <laughs> I did that at a party with a bottle of wine, and I went up to like... Oh, somewhat... yeah, we were sober. I want to clarify that. This sound, You sound fun. We were weird. <laughs> oh, that... yeah. I mean, I was stone cold sober when this happened as okay. well. Yeah, because okay. I wasn't drinking the oh, wine. And I asked you know. if they wanted to... Yeah, Put it right here. Not cool at all. <laughs> Not at all. I've been described as so uncool it loops back around to cool. Whoa. So camp. Ca- I am camp. camp. I am a high camp, I think. Mm-hmm. You're very you're very high, you're very high camp. But the difference was my bit bombed. I went up, I was like, "Do you want to hold the wine?" and the guy was like, "I'll drink the wine." I was like, "You're That's what pisses people off is when you're fun mm-hmm. and they're not fun." So, so just, I think that circles back to the Bluetooth in the pocket, Lady Gaga nonstop. Yeah, mm. go to the reunion and just be fun, and that yeah. will upset them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or just tell them, honestly, like, well, RuPaul fracks. <laughs> <laughs> I think that statement pisses everyone off. Yeah. It makes me mad at RuPaul because I love the franchise, but it also makes other people mad because then they have to oh, remember RuPaul Oh, I don't want him exists. to do it too. Yeah. yeah. It's like, he's not allowed to do that. He's gay. It's like, actually, anybody can ruin the earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Love is love and gas is gas. And gas yeah. is gas. Oh, baby. All environmental disasters matter. Uh, <laughs> so beautiful. You, you want to know something funny? They yeah. named April 22nd RuPaul Day in Las Vegas, which is, in fact, Earth Day. Whoa. That's shady. Mm-hmm. I don't think Vegas likes the Earth very much. I've been no. to those buffets. Very they're, wasteful. They're a good buffet, though. They yeah. got a good buffet they in good Vegas. Buffets. They have one singular good buffet in Vegas? I went to one at the Bellagio that okay. I still talk about. The Bellagio's okay. great. The win, also very good. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I have one more mm-hmm. pulled up. Okay. Hi. I am currently in an algebra class where our teacher made us do an end of the year project that teaches something in form of a video. Some videos were inappropriate. Now I ask you to rate what's worse a commercial about a fake, a fake product that kicks babies into the sun that also teaches slope. I think that's funny. <laughs> Or a video that starts with a teacher being shot at and then proceeds to teach something. This was turned in days after the recent shooting in Texas. I think that one's way worse. The that's second one is much. definitely worse. worse. First one's kind of fun. Kicking babies. That's funny. It's it like kicking funny. small dogs. It's like, what are they going to do? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm funny sorry. Something's useless. <laughs> I, think, is, I think kicking a baby is funnier than kicking a dog. But it's a really small dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dog baby. Yes, it's Ooh. a it's a dog baby. I've I've never kicked a dog on purpose. Thank you so much. I know I'm a hero. Wait, have you kicked a dog on accident? Oh yeah. <laughs> there does it get under your feet? And what are you gonna do? 
you know, un- they're underfoot. You one know, one minute they're underfoot, the well, next minute burrito. they're in the sun. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. Also, if you're learning about slope, that yeah. is educational. Right. Very the educational. The second thing wasn't. It was just traumatic, and they yeah. should. They should I, I'm not kidding. Check I can't. In I don't on know what kid. the. I'm sure there was like an educational aspect to that, but that just sounded kind of violent. Yeah, check in on them. Yeah. The fact that this listener doesn't even remember what was being taught indicates that it was mm-hmm. not a very good video. Mm. Bad video. Yeah. Yeah. But they but they remember slope through the babies. Yeah. Do better. I'm L- sure. That, I'm sure. X Listen. Over, I'm sure they know x over y or what's the quadratic formula? Do they teach slope? X equals negative B plus, plus or, or minus, minus the square, square root, root of, of C squared over two A B and minus four A B all over two A. Two A. Yeah. We nailed it. You know, I heard Liam Michelle was really hard to work with on set. <laughs> with her vagina always out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I know instead of the quadratic formula. <laughs> <laughs> well, Selective memory. so actually what we just did was burlesque. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, AP, AP stripping. AP, AP stripping. stripping. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Well, we are coming towards the end of our podcast, and so we come to... Uh, li- uh, I was about to say listener submission self perception corner, which mm-hmm. is where we ask our guests to describe how they how they believe they are perceived by other people, and then we say how we actually perceive you. Oh my worst nightmare and biggest dream. Um, <laughs> yeah, it evokes a lot of feelings for people. I it think. does. Um, I always thought of myself as like desperately seeking Zoe Deschanel kind of thing like I think I w- I thought I was a manic pixie dream girl and I'm like that's it's the Disney adult in me like it's the blah 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 um but now I think that I'm more normal than I ever wanted to be like my biggest fear growing up was like I want to be anything but boring yeah mm. so you just pick something weird like I played steel drum as a kid because I thought it was ironic which I think is now I'm I'm like oh well, the kids, they call that cultural appropriation is what they call that now. Mm. But I thought it was really funny. That, I mean, no, anybody can play steel drum. I'll make that clear. But I think I was doing it because I thought it but was. But who should? <laughs> Not a 95-pound sixth grader <laughs> in central Indiana. Only tin men should play steel and They said tin men. Men made of tin. M- n- men and made of tin. And they play more tin. Yes. yes. That's, what I, that's what I did say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so you think you th- you kind of think of yourself as chasing Zoe de Chanel, okay? But just like in the way that she's quirky, I ba- mm. bangs really scare me. I don't have the <laughs> attention span to yeah. take care of nice bangs. Um, but yeah, I think I always thought I was like a quirky girl and okay. chaotic, really, really chaotic. Mm. You know, I see it, and I think what I I really like talking to you. I really do because I feel I feel a kinship. I feel that we both know many of the same absurd things. Mm-hmm. Mm. I love listening to you talk. I feel like you, you're you really good at giving oral histories of absolutely useless things, which I love <laughs> and need more of in my life. And um, I feel like something I really like when, like, I feel like we'd, like, met a couple times, but mm-hmm. when we, like, hung out was, like, after that show we did together. Mm-hmm. And I like that you and Sabrina, who were definitely going to get on, like, both, there was just, like, a like there's not that thing of like when when comics don't know each other as well and they like pretend to like formally introduce each other like oh i'm gabby like it was just like hey how are you Mm -hmm. and i thought that was really nice and i appreciate your friendliness Mm. thank you that's what i see with you is just a very like generous giving person yeah i will say i will say that the first time i met you i made uh, an assumption that i thought I'm probably not going to have a lot in common with this person uh-huh. and be able to relate to this person. But the more time I spent talking to you and also watching your stand up, there was uh, a very th- there was a very attractive quality of like curiosity mm-hmm. and a very uh, a very uh, sort of what you s- spoke about, just like an openness and willing to talk about anything that I thought, oh, I see like aspects of my brain in, you, in the same that, like, we had very different upbringings, but we arrived to, I think, some similar conclusions. And I thought, oh, I'm actually a lot more similar to this person. And it's, and it's very it's very fun to talk with you yeah. because of the way you speak about things and the way you evaluate. And it's just, I like it a lot, yeah. Okay, wow. That went really well. Thank you so much. <laughs> and you are quirky. You're a very quirky gal. Because you know what I think about quirky is, like, quirky is just... ADHD manifested into masking, like social masking. Oh. Yes, yeah. I feel like I did a lot. Of, I pro- it's I, like a defense mechanism. Yeah, honestly, because mm. it's like I don't. I always thought I'm like I couldn't be basic if I tried. 
yeah but like in it like not like oh basic is bad like i tried that and it went so poorly in my life that i was like then just opposite end of the spectrum if you can't beat them don't join them go join start another club Mm, that's beautiful (laughs) that is genuinely beautiful i feel like yeah that's that's why like I feel like even when I'm at my most neutral in a conversation, the things I say just don't make any sense because I I do that a lot. I have an inability to like really understand what's happening in a given conversation because my brain is always in 10 other places. Mm -hmm. Preach on soul sister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. We're some ADHD babies on this pod. Yeah. I'm I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out. (laughs) And we had coffee. Yeah. We're like, we're all buzzing from the inside. (laughs) I could be, I'm a go-kart right now. Zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, baby. <laughs> zoom, zoom, go karts. Zoom, zoom. Go karts with a Z. <laughs> go karts with a Z. Please zoom into anything and everything you want to plug. Socials, shows, what's going on? Yes, um, you can follow me at Sid period the period king on Instagram. Um, and if you enjoyed my unpacking of religious drama, please listen to um my podcast I have with my friend Becca Stevenson called yeah. Good Girls Gone Sad, where we unpack our religious trauma with um comedians, non comedians, whoever, and we play silly little games like nice. um it's like wait wait don't tell me but religious. Mm. Fun 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 fun. Very yes. fun. Very cool. I will say I'm I believe I'm doing. Oh yes, I I think I'm doing doing um uh popped collar comedy on june 18th and then on the hold on 20 oh, will this come out very soon this will be coming out on monday oh okay then you can um also get tickets to a live show for good girls gone sad at club coming on yes. july 20th and then also on june 23rd i believe i'm doing a show at grove 34 i'm working out the details but that'll be happening and then um the same thing as i said before but uh, i'll be doing the edinburgh festival this year with a couple people and Woo! we're gonna have more details coming out soon i think it's called the 300 playground theater that's our venue wow. um but yeah we're gonna be posting about it more as we get closer to august gabby what about you i'm going to europe hell yeah hell, hell yeah. yeah so um we are going to be figuring out like when we're going to be putting out more meerkats content like nice, when we're yes. going to like be if we're going to be able to record remotely mm-hmm. i'm going to try and bring my microphone and my cool. laptop but um going to be in europe until from the 14th until um june 28th i think but right before that i'm going to be on etan levine's show at pine box rock shop on Woo. monday june 13th and then i'll have other stuff coming up but mainly Hot. i'll be eating fucking pasta yeah nice yeah the Eat one that pasta. doesn't make you bloat <laughs> oh no honey it's gonna make me bloat but I've, have oh. you heard that thing people talk about this on tiktok that like if you eat things that you typically like have more sensitivity to in the united states outside of the united states like yes. it's just processed less processed or like better for you i have heard that have problems. it is yeah that's exactly what i'm talking about i have a about. feeling i'm gonna lose a shit ton of weight in europe actually in, and oh, and i'm you're gonna going, get so snatched you're and just I'm, gonna smoke packs a day oh baby <laughs> oh baby you know it and they're gonna be those skinny cigarettes they're, they're just yeah. 11 you're gonna have one long. of those like holders like corella de vil <laughs> yeah i'm gonna look like the cigarettes at the end you are going close <laughs> Oh, uh, I think that's a beautiful place. Don't to smoke cigarettes, listeners. Don't smoke. Don't smoke. Don't smoke. Prioritize your health. We have a lot. Vape. Of, it's, yeah. I'm kidding. Vape. <laughs> vape. Don't smoke. Vape. 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 Don't actually. Okay, uh, wait. As a 27 year old, vaping is so embarrassing. And if you're in high school, stop it. It's yeah. Like, it's embarrassing. Good. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much, Sid King. You've been amazing. And we will see you and uh, next time. Next time. Right, don't smoke vape. Don't smoke. Don't vape. smoke vapes. Hey.